Hello everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a while since my last video and I'm really excited to be back with you. Now today's video is a little different. It's about an alternative way of solving the equations from simple harmonic motion. So I was reading some um, papers and I came across a method and I thought I would modify that method um, to give you something that's that's new and, and different. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. So essentially this video is about the following. So um, the idea is to look at a, the standard differential equation from uh, the harmonic motion. And we're keeping it really simple, so there's no forcing, there's no um, uh, damping. And the idea is to sort of bring together two ideas. So one is factorization, the other one is the theory of complex variables. Now it sounds difficult, actually, if you have some basic um, math and physics, then you'll, you'll have no problem with this, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's look at the equations we're going to look at. So, undamped case of simple harmonic motion, you see it at high school. So, V is the velocity, X is the position at time T, K is related to the spring constant, and M is the mass, okay? So you might picture a pendulum that goes back and forward, okay? And um, the, the dash here is the derivative. Okay, so this is the standard kind of very simple equation. We're gonna look at it in this form, so I've just made a substitution, okay? Just cause the, the omega squared means that the calculations are a bit easier. And the question is, how can I solve this in some sort of new and simple way? Okay, so that, that's the idea. So, let's have a look. The basic idea that I'm going to draw on is called the method of factorizing or factoring. So basically the idea is to reduce this problem here down to a, a different form, okay? And the, the big question that I use in my method involves the following. Are there constants, P and Q, such that you can write this differential equation in this form? And, P, and you're probably saying, well, hang on, Chris, this looks much simpler than this. Well, I agree, but what you can do is make a substitution so you get a simple first order differential equation, okay? So that's the idea. So the idea is to relate it to a, a simpler first order differential equation. Okay, let me move that up a bit. So if I let Z be uh, V minus PX and Z in there, I get Z dash minus QZ equals zero. That is a pretty simple equation, okay? Which I, I can integrate that almost directly, okay? So that's the idea. Factorize the equation to reduce it to a simpler problem, solve the simpler problem, and then get back uh, what you want. Okay, so how do I do it? Well, P and Q are constants here, possibly complex numbers. You just expand this, this first bracket and tie it up to get this. And what you would do is then compare this with the original equation too. So it's something like this. Oops. Okay, so see there's no term involving V here. So negative P minus Q has to equal zero and P times Q has to equal omega squared. So this is basically exactly those two 
equations here. Okay, so you can solve these two equations for P and Q by putting, for example, one equation into the other. You get a polynomial and um, there's going to be two solutions. And uh, using the basic complex numbers, you're going to get the solutions to 6 as a conjugate pair. So when you solve this, whichever way you solve it, you're going to get something like negative i omega and positive i omega as the two solutions. So I found a value of p and a value of q such that this can be written in the form 3. Okay, so let's write it in that way and we can then solve it. All right, so I'm claiming here that I've rigorously and logically shown that we may recast 2 in the form 3 with these values. The bar here just means conjugate, okay? All right, so now we've got this. It looks more difficult, right? But actually, if I make the substitution z equals this and this because they're the same things in the brackets, I get this equation. Okay, so let me just sort of remind us of where, where we're at. Okay, we started with this equation for simple harmonic motion. We said, right, let's recast that in this form for some numbers p and q, which could be complex numbers. We expanded this and compared it against the original equation, and we got two equations for P and Q, which we solved. We got that for P and that for Q. Okay, So letting Z be these two things here, I get this equation. Now, this equation is easy to solve. It's an exponential. And here, A may be complex. Okay, So A is a constant. It may be complex. Okay, so we've now solved it. Now, what was Z again? Z was V plus I omega X. That's going to help us. All right. Whichever way you solve that thing, you get Z equals V plus I omega X. And we found it to be this. So what I'm trying to do here is now get X and V. The, so the, the position and the velocity. And it turns out that I can do that in one hit okay so just stay with me this is where the complex numbers uh, come in the constant a can be written in a polar exponential form okay where this is the modulus of a and this is the principal argument so an angle so let's replace a up here with this and combine through our exponent laws to get this so now what we have from 9 is V plus I omega X equals this. Okay, so we still haven't found um, V and X. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to draw on Euler's famous formula, which relates the exponential with cosine and sine. So essentially, I'm going to replace that with cosine of that plus i sine of that. Okay, that's Euler's formula. So this equals this moves to this. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, I can just simply write down the answer now for x and v. How do I do it? Well, equate the real parts and the imaginary parts. We've got equality here, so we can do that, right? So V is going to be that times cosine of that. And X is going to be that, just the sine part, divided by omega. And that is exactly what we have obtained down the bottom. So in one simple motion, we have obtained not only the position but the velocity as well pretty cool huh 
So let me let me just run you through that again, okay? Because I know some people have joined the stream a little late. Okay, we started off with the equation for simple harmonic motion. We moved to this simpler form. We said, right, can we write this in terms of a factored form? If we can, then making a substitution, we can get this simple form down here. Okay, so let's do it. Expand this to get this, and then compare, right? These two things are equal. So negative P minus Q equals zero, and PQ equals omega squared. Solve that, you get a polynomial, gives you two, a conjugate pair, I guess, and then put those into here, and you get this with Z equals this mess, and Z equals this mess. So you get that, right? Um, uh, sorry, here. Solve it. That a is a, a is a potential complex number. And then use this to get X and, X and V. Okay, so from here, I've said, right, let's tidy that up. Write this in polar exponential form. I've got this equals this. I want X, I want V. I can move to Euler's formula to get both of them in one hit. Okay. So just by equating the real and the complex, uh, the real and the imaginary parts, I've done it. Okay, so that is one way to solve the equation for simple harmonic motion really simply, okay, using factorization and complex numbers. Pretty cool, huh? Um, now, the title of this talk was it's a, an accessible, justifiable, and transferable approach for the, the, the solution. So what, does, what do I mean by that? Well, it's justifiable. I think I've been pretty reasonably rigorous here. It's accessible because it doesn't involve any super high-powered mathematics, and it's transferable to other problems. So a good question here would be, well, what about if there was some damping here, or there was some external force. Yep, you can use these methods and you can find them in my paper. Okay guys, what do you think? If you have questions, comments, feedback, you can write something. I'm going to write something in the comment section right now. Hello. If you have anything to say, I'd love you to post a, uh, a comment about this because it's new. I'll put a link to the paper in the description. And um, yeah, it's great to be back on YouTube. Yeah, um, yeah so hope you enjoyed it and um, I'll see you soon. Bye everyone.